I say, what a mighty God we serve. Can you turn to somebody and tell them he's mighty? I said, can you turn to somebody and tell them he's mighty this morning? Hallelujah. Caught you off guard. Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you once again for the privilege that we have, God, to gather ourselves together in your house, Lord. And I emphasize your house because it don't belong to man. It belongs to you. And, Father, we ask the Holy Spirit to just to take charge of the service, everything that we do, everything that we say, that, Lord, it brings glory and praise and honor unto you. Let your people be blessed, Father God, in your presence. Hallelujah, as we worship in spirit and in truth. We bind all powers and fortresses of the enemy. We exercise our God-given authority in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over Satan and all of his hindrances. We bind in the name of the Lord. Lord God, where there's nothing but genuine moving of your Holy Spirit in Jesus. Jesus name and everybody said amen and amen. Greet somebody this morning in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has for he has made me glad oh he has made me glad he has made me glad i will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad he has made me glad i will rejoice for he has made me glad and i will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart i will enter his courts with Everybody's dancing now. If only we could see us 
Change my life and wiped away the past. I want to shout it out from that rooftop saying, For now I know that God is for me, not against me. I could sing an ending song of how you saved my soul.
your presence this morning, Jesus. Sweep over this congregation, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And as I come into
praise him for his presence in our lives and in this church in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you take the presence of the Lord with you. Hallelujah, for the Lord says, I don't dwell in temples made of hands, but your body is the temple of the living God. Father, we just want to lift up holy hands without wrath, ascension, and glorify you. Just praise you and exalt you and thank you, God, that you've given us breath, you've given us life, and life more abundantly, and therefore, God, I thank you and I praise you for that life-giving flow, Father, that you place within each and every one of your believers in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, most of all, I want to give you thanksgiving that I know in my knower, Lord, this morning that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I know that heaven is my home, and I thank you, God, for such assurance. I thank you for blessed assurance, O oh God, that you have placed within us in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, my God, for all the benefits that lie in Christ Jesus and what he had done at the cross of Calvary. That, Father, everything we receive from you, it comes through your precious cross in the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the shed blood. Oh, without the shedding of blood, Lord, there's no forgiveness of sins. We understand that. We thank you, God, that we're a people that's washed in the blood. We're a people that's washed in the blood. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, bless your name, my God, as we glorify you and exalt you and bless you, my Father. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Exaltations, praises, thanksgivings belongs unto you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Ah, oh, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my soon-coming King. Father, I ask who is likened unto you, for you're the deliverer. Who is a rock except for you, O oh God? Lord, let your people put their trust in you. Every circumstance, every situation, everything that the enemy has tried to throw against them, that God, you are their prevailing, you are their security, you are that hut, you are that shield, you are that fortress, hallelujah, that we run into in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Be thou glorified, O oh God, in our bodies. Be glorified in our minds. Be glorified in our actions. Be glorified in our figure of speech. Be glorified in this church this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, I feel like shouting in the house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For his mercy endures from generation to generation. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. As they're redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb of the living God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got a witness in this house this morning. I said, we got a witness in this house this morning. My Lord, you ought to be jumping up and down, shouting praises to God. Why? Because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You've got a blessed hope. If you don't have a blessed hope, you need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I said, you need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want to sing that song. The Lord's brought that to my attention, and we're going to sing it for the glory of God in the name of the Lord. The devil don't like the blood, but the saints of God love the blood in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's sing it to the Lord. Are you well, to the Lord. Jesus for the cleansing power. Uh, Are you washed in the blood uh, of the uh, Lamb? Uh, Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?
bridegroom, come with you, your robes be white. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion bride? Be washed. garments. Remember? He said, friend, how would you get up here without the right garment on? You see, he came with self-righteousness. Those that are washed in the blood, they come, listen, not in their self-righteousness, but they come in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Only those that are righteous in Christ will find heaven their home. No self-righteousness, listen, will glory in the presence of the Lord. I say, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you have the proper wedding garments on? Hallelujah, because if you don't look at me, you're not going to make it. I said, you're not going to make it. Hallelujah, I thank God that I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Look at me, there's still power in the blood. I said, there's still power in the blood. In the blood. I'm going to say it again. There's still power in the blood. My God, I'm going to get my phone out and hit the clap button. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is power, power, oh, underworking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, oh, underworking power in the blood. That all of our enemies would crumble at our feet. Whatever we find on earth shall be bound in heaven. We've got the power. Do you believe that, church? Name of the Lord. We've got the power. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. No saint is raging. We will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Now personalize it. I've got power. I've got the power. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. No saint to praise me to be there. I've got the power in the name of the Lord. Now grab, grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to say something with me. Hallelujah. If you turn and look at them just a little bit, I want you to say this, silver and gold have I none. In other words, I'm not a rich person, don't have that much money, but such as I have, come on, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Receive ye the power of God's Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I said receive ye the power of God in the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Folk, I believe that this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For many years now, Satan's tried to hinder and Satan's tried to stop us. But we the church, <laughs> but we the church, like a mighty army, we keep marching onward, winning every victory because the Lord's on our side. Come on, let's sing that last part, if we would, please. Satan tries to stop us, but the church of Jesus is still alive. Like a mighty army, we keep marching. guide the surgeon's hands, Lord, as she takes out all of this metal in her legs, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we're asking that there be no complications, but the angels of the Lord would be in charge in Jesus' name. Let the power, God, of the anointing of the Spirit of the Lord give such a peace and such a rest and such total healing, Father, in the name of the Lord. Such a speedy recovery, God, to take place in Jesus' name. And we truly bless you and we thank you for that. Lord, as all fear is dispelled, and God, nothing but steadfast confidence flows through her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, as we commend her into your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb, Jeff. Jack. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for Jack, God's just friend. Lord, we know, God, that he's placed into the hollow of your hand. Let your will be done and accomplished in the name of the Lord. Father, we can't do nothing but stand and believe the report of the Lord. And God, we stand in the, in the grounds of healing. We stand in the grounds of faith, Father, in the name of the Lord. For God, even times like this, Lord, they can't stand and pray for themselves. But Lord, we stand and intercede to make up the hedge and the gap. And God, I thank you and I praise you for the power of your spirit, Lord. Just to flow over Jack and over the family, over the wife, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as you keep them secure and sound in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's not saved, is he? Hallelujah. That's why his mind's a scramble. Seriously. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, as our sister stands in the gap for her husband, oh God, I thank you, Father God, for dealing with the mind, Lord, and the spirit and the heart in the name of Jesus. For Lord, we believe this is of you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you can use all things for your good, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God, that he falls to his knees and repents and invites you into his heart and his life. And I thank you, God, for using his wife, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that he'd say, pray for me and lead me to your God in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we call it done, Father, and we're looking for the victory report, God, to come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. I believe that. God's doing that in the name of the Lord. Huh? Hallelujah. Father, we pray right now for a sister's hips, her back in the name of the Lord. God, we just speak to these conditions and we just ask, God, for the power of your Holy Spirit just to touch those areas that's affected in the mighty name of Jesus. For God, our trust is in you. You know our hearts, Lord. And we're just asking, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for ministering to our sister right now, Father in that area that's affected, Father, in Jesus' name, to you be glorified and you be praised and honored in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, this is a little one. What you need Back. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now for Amber Lynn's back, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the power of your Holy Spirit flow through this area that's affected God. We pray in Jesus' name. The authority of the name of Jesus makes her whole. And what you did on the cross of Calvary, Father, we thank you and we praise you for that. All glory belongs unto you, my Savior, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We believe that amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We've got the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. You can be seated if you can. A couple of ushers take our tithes and offerings this morning. Bless the Lord. <coughs> We thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the power that you've shown through your name, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the message that you have prepared for your people. We just ask, Lord, that the pastor be obedient, Lord, to delivering that through the, yes. the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we ask, for Lord, for a blessing upon this offering, not only the gift but the giver. And, Lord, we'll praise you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. While they're taking that up, a couple of announcements. Tonight's service, 6 p.m., my wife will be ministering in that service. Bless the Lord while I and a few other boys are taking off for Guatemala. We'll be down there for nine days and enjoying the mountains on a mule trip back in the remote areas of Guatemala, putting in floors in some of the mud huts down in Guatemala. So uh, we'll have prayer, special prayer at the end of the service for everyone, all the guys that's gone down to Guatemala. 
And, uh, of course, my wife, she's going to Florida for uh, Sisters Week, get together with her sisters. They live apart from each other, and every year they have a Sisters Week, and they get together and go someplace, uh, and they meet, and they stay in a motel, or not a motel, but uh, I don't know what they call it, condominiums or whatever it is. And uh, They just enjoy their self in the luxuries while we go and uh, enjoy ourselves in uh, the... Uh, non-luxuries. <laughs> Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. But uh, praise God, we thank the Lord uh, that uh, for that, for the opportunity that we have to go on a mule trip. And uh, I've always wanted to go on a mule trip, and I'm not getting any younger, and, I, and uh, it come up at the right time to where I can go and bless the Lord. I thank God that I got a couple brothers that wanted to go with me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. You just keep us in your prayers, if you would. Hallelujah. We go fishing in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's all for the glory of God. It's not for the glory of man, but all for the glory of God. Souls be birthed into the kingdom of the Lord. Some would say, well, what kind of a ministry would it be, you know, just laying floors in people's mud huts? Well, I want to tell you something. Listen, folk, it's an act of love, and when you do an act of love, then you can minister the grace and the mercy of the Lord, and win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now understand these villages that we're going into, that Kirk built these, these uh, two uh, churches. When he first went in there about a year ago, they was contemplating, they had a board meeting, or a council meeting, and they was contemplating how to kill these guys. You know, whether they hang them, chop their head off, or what they're going to do. But understand something, how Kirk ministered to them was through their kids. He took uh, uh, different uh, school packs and and uh, and in them was crayons and pencils and all different things and got in to give them to the schools. Well, God showered down divine favor upon them. And the next thing you know, you know, several got saved, so he built a church there. And then he went on into the next village. And those are the villages that we'll be ministering in and, and uh, done the very same thing. And, and now they build a church there. And the, both those churches are thriving simply because several people give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, hear me, bless the Lord, it all started out with acts of kindness and love in Jesus' name. So, folk, understand something, hallelujah, everything we do is for God's glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah to the Lamb. Every time I leave on a mission trip before I get on the plane, I always be, look up to the sky and I say, Lord, for your glory in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord forevermore. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful. I didn't get to go on a missions trip last year, but health-wise, w- it wasn't there. wasn't the timing that I was going to go to Africa, but it didn't get over to Africa. That's coming up probably in the near future. But uh, bless the Lord, I'm looking forward to this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore. Praise the Lord. It, it, it's hard to pack. Uh, you're going to be back in there for, I don't know, four or five days and Asked Kirk, I said, uh, what, what do you, you know, I've never been on a mule trip. What do you pack? He said, well, you need a small backpack, uh, get some uh, uh, beef jerky and uh, trail mix for on the trail to get back in there. And, and uh, there's water there that you can wash in and, and what have you. And uh, so a small backpack, you know, a, school, a kid's school backpack, you just can't put too much in there. And then he's saying, hey, brother, he said, can you get me 12 cans of tuna and, and uh uh, uh, four cans uh, or four boxes of uh, Betty Crocker uh, cheesy potatoes. I said, where am I going to put all this stuff? I mean, you know, my backpack's exploding. And, of course, then I, I said, you know what? I told the brothers, I said, brothers, I'm just going to buy a suitcase. And I went to Virginia, got a $3 suitcase, and I threw every bit of that stuff in that suitcase We'll eat the $45, send it down there to him to where we're not sitting here, you know, and don't have room for our own stuff. And uh, it's, it's evident Kirk hasn't flown on an airplane for quite some time because now you pay for everything. It don't surprise me that they don't charge you for the, for the air that they pump into the airplanes. Charge you for breathing. I mean, you can't get a glass of water without paying for it. Everything that you, you have, I mean, you got to pay for it anymore. But, uh, you know, we're trying to get by as, as cheap as possible. Bless the Lord forevermore. But it's going to be very interesting, in the name of the Lord, because Kirk says, have everything packed in those backpacks because, you know, uh, the suitcases are going right to my house and we're heading right to the village. So it's going to be interesting because I got quite a bit of stuff in my suitcase. And uh, 
uh, pray for us. Can I, can I say that? Pray for us. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. But while we're gone, bless the Lord. We've got my wife. We've got Jeff taking care of the services and Sarah taking care of the services. So you're going to be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. What a glorious God we serve. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God delivered a message into my heart. And I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to minister down here. Hallelujah. You know, there's times that when you stand on the pulpit, it tries to put people above other people. And how many know the pastor is not above the congregation? Amen. Hear me. God has bestowed upon the pastor special gifts to rightly divide the word of truth. Hear me to, to impart spiritual gifts into, into the lives or teach on spiritual gifts and build the body of Christ up. But can I tell you something? God loves you just as much as what he loves me. There's no big eyes or little U's in the kingdom of God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It amuses me that many of the pastors, they won't even shake hands with their congregation, afraid that they're going to lose their anointing. Oh, brother, if you lose your anointing by shaking somebody's hand, you don't even have the anointing. <laughs> Can I say that? Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But God gave me a message back in 1996. 1996, and the Lord told me to dig that message out, and I want you to view that message because I want you to see how that this has come to pass. And, you know, I, I really didn't uh, fully uh, uh, think, well, 1996, and I thought, and, and I've got messages that's dated, man, clear back into the 80s. And some of them, I don't know how even people sat and listened to me. I'm serious. It's, it had to be the anointing just carried me through. But uh, understand something. Hallelujah. God spoke something to the church back in 1996 that was vitally important. And I'm going to preach this message. But then the Lord began to deal with me and began to speak prophecy into my heart while I was in my office uh, two days ago, and I just started writing down what the Lord was speaking to me. And I mean, it went on and on and on and on and on, what the Lord had, what the Lord did, and what's in store for the body of Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. So I believe, look at me, this church is on its way to a wealthy place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that? In the name of the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning about the militant church. The militant church. Some of you might remember that back 1996. Maybe you didn't. I even forgot about it until I pulled it up. Bless the Lord. But uh, in Ephesians 6, uh, 10 and 12, I don't know if I give that to you or not, Kristen. I don't think I did. But of course we know and we've been teaching on uh, spiritual warfare. Over the last several Sundays, we've been talking about demonic spirits. We've been talking about uh, uh, spiritual warfare. We've talked about uh, uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Uh, Be strong in the power of, of, of the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against what flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Bless the Lord. Wherefore, take unto you what? The whole armor of God. Hallelujah. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Understand something, folk. The devil hates the church. Now, he don't hate a church that's not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you've got trouble in the church, look at me, chances are your church, hear me, is on fire for God. If you've been bombarded as a family, chances are you've got something the devil wants to take from you. But I want to tell you something, any church, hear me, child of God, any church that is exempt from problems, I would run from that church. Understand something. The devil takes heyday in churches 
that don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if you're preaching the totality of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, look at me, you're going to go for a ride. Hallelujah. Hold on to the bull because he's going to take your ride. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And folk, I don't know about you, but over the years of ministry, I've, I've seen about every, anything and everything you can see coming down the pike, calling itself Christianity or calling itself truth or what have you. But I've learned through experience over the many years to decipher what is of God and what isn't of God. And I've learned over the years, hear me, of a lot of the, the, the strategies and trickeries that the enemy uses to try to destroy the God-given church and the God-given family. Hear me. Hallelujah. We're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. As I said, we're not a novice. In other words, we've not just been born again. I've been born again for probably about 40-some years now. So I've got a right to speak, I believe, into some of you's hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of what the Lord has dealt with me. Back in, in uh, 1996, uh, you know, I couldn't see some of the things that, that, that the Lord had spoke to my heart in this message. But now in 2012, as I look back on that, I say, man, God, you hit that right on the target. Every bit of it you hit right on the target. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, for the weapons of a warfare are not called but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Look at me. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We here at Harvest Field PCG have got the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. The devil don't like us. He never did like us. We're his worst headache in this northwest Ohio in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believest thou this, child of God, Hallelujah to the Lamb. What you're going through, hear me, it's not something unusual. Listen, we go through fiery trials and testings and temptings. Listen, hallelujah, for a purpose. And we'll have an understanding why we go through those in this message. Bless the Lord. But I believe the church is under great demonic attack, hear me, from the underworld. Can somebody say amen? amen. Through the underworld. I'm telling you what, listen, Satan is throwing out all garbage and filth and rot that he can possibly muster up. You know why? Because he knows his time is short. How would the church know that her time is short? We're about ready to get raptured out of here, folk. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. But the church is under great demonic attack if it's doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now, now let, me, let me specify in doing something for the Lord. I'm not just talking about doing humanitarian programs. Hear me. You can do humanitarian programs and, and it amounts to nothing but just humanitarian programs. You've just done something good. But I'm talking about, listen, when people get healed and delivered and set free, I'm talking about people getting, getting saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hear me. The devil don't like that. I said he don't care about that. But understand something, hallelujah, if I can sit here and just tickle somebody's ears and tell you how good you are and this, that, and the other and make you feel good in, in sins and trespasses, look at me, he's not going to bother me at all. But folk, I want to tell you something, when you preach purity and holiness, listen, without such no man sees the kingdom of God, the devil don't like that. When you start preaching the cross of Jesus Christ, which speaks of self-crucifixion to people, hear me, hallelujah, people don't like that. The devil don't like that. And somebody said, amen, amen. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we've been under great, great stress and great attacks. Many, many, many churches have been under great attacks by the powers and principalities of hell. Hallelujah. I believe, listen, in the body of Christ, hear me, it's time to lay aside petty differences. I said it's time to lay aside petty differences 
and join forces, hear me, child of God, and become the militant church that God has called us to be in this day and in this age in the name of the Lord. Come on. Now, I'm not talking about every church. I'm talking about the blood-bought, blood-washed church of the living God. I can't join hands with, listen, somebody that believes that Muslims are going to heaven. If they're saved, they're going to heaven. But if they're serving Allah, hear me, they're not going to heaven. There's only one way, and that name, that way is Jesus Christ. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. But in the house of God, and I say even in this house, look at me, not everybody's going to agree with me. And somebody said, Hallelujah to the Lamb. Not everybody's going to agree, but let us disagree agreeably. I said, let us disagree agreeably. Can we say that again? Let us disagree agreeably. One more time. Let us disagree agreeably. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. As we disagree agreeably, lay aside our differences as long as it's not in accordance to laying aside, listen, the basic principles of the doctrines of Christ, we can, we can agree agreeably. And somebody said, Amen. Bless the Lord. But look what it says here in Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25, and this not only goes for a church, but it goes for a home and it goes for a nation. Hear me, it goes for anything, a business or what have you. Let's read it together. Every kingdom, what? Divided against itself is brought to desolation. I looked that word desolation up and it simply means uh, lay waste or forsaken. Say that with me. Lay waste or forsaken forsaken hallelujah what causes a church what causes a, a, a business what causes a family to lay waste hear me child of God listen when they're divided against itself I didn't say that but God's word says that hear me hallelujah to the lamb we're reading it every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation read and every city or every house. Now how many know he's not talking about the house you're living in? Hear me. He's talking about the people that possess that house and live in that house. Hello. That is divided against themselves shall not stand. You know what? This scripture alone tells me where the United States of America stands. It will be brought to desolation. You know why? Because we're divided against ourselves. We've got the Democrats, Republicans. What else? Independents. Hear me. Jesus said any kingdom divided against itself, it won't stand. It will crumble. Folk, I don't know about you, but thank God I'm in the kingdom of God where there's unity, love, and faith. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And ought not this be in the house of God as well? Amen? I believe it ought to be in the house of God as well. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Some of the greatest attacks, hear me, that I've ever seen in the, in the, the history of the church over the last three years or four years, listen, over the history of the church, over the families of the church, hear me, over, the, over these years, some of the greatest attacks of the enemy that I've never seen in my whole time of ministry have literally hit whole households, whole families, and hit the church world as well. Hear me, folk. Hallelujah. Any church, any family, any government that's divided against itself is sure to have a collapse in it. Are you hearing me? Vitally important. You can mark assured, hear me, that the church will fall as demonic spirits drive wedges, hear me, drive wedges between brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't be surprised if he tries to divide, drive a wedge between husbands and wives and sons and daughters. In, listen, in your house. Because the Lord warns us ahead of time that this is going to happen. But look at me. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. You know what? If you choose to be destroyed, you're going to get destroyed. 
Life is made up of choices. I don't know about you, but I choose to go the Bible way and not my way. Hey! I said I choose to go the Bible way and not my way. Because understand something, if I want it my way, look at me, and nobody else's way, listen, Satan will drive a wedge in between brothers and sisters to cause division. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but in my earlier years of my marriage, uh, Satan would play all types of uh, trickeries and, and different things in our marriage. And uh, uh, I want to tell you something. There's been times I'd said, you know, I'm giving my wife the silent treatment or she's giving me the silent treatment and this, that, and the other, and we wouldn't talk for it to each other, you know, uh, for a day or two days or what have you. You know, you'd go out to a restaurant or drive in the car and it'd just be as silent as silent could be. You could hear a pin drop on the floor because we couldn't get along. And the Lord says, you keep that stuff up and you'll be divided. Now, folk, understand something. This is not me. This is God. You see, a lot of people say, well, that's just Pastor Martin's theory. That's Pastor Martin's idea. No, that's God's idea. He's the one that said, listen, any div- anybody that's divided, any nation, any family, any church that's divided against itself, it won't stand. I didn't say that, but God said it. Hear me. And I knew, listen, if, I, if something didn't happen, understand, we was heading for collapse. And folk, hear me. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you know right from wrong, how many know the Holy Spirit will take you to the woodshed over and over and over again and it leads to the peaceable fruit of righteousness and not wrongdoing? And somebody said, Amen. I don't know about you, but I probably wore the Lord's board out. He probably had to make another board and and, and, uh, take me to the woodshed many times. And I believe he's taken many of you to the woodshed as well in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because understand me, if you've never been taken to the woodshed, look at me. The Bible says you're a bastard and you don't belong to the family of God. Iron sharpeneth iron. Can you say that? Iron sharpeneth iron. Why is it people get mad when you preach the truth and iron tries to sharpen them and look at me? God begins to spank them. They get mad at you and run. Why is that? But yet they want to apply the iron to you and expect you to take it. But when you give iron back, hear me, to sharpen them, which is the word of God, Some won't put up with it and say, hey, I'm out of here. No way. Folk, I don't know about you, but listen to me. Hallelujah. Thank God for godly advice, especially if I'm wrong. Thank God for godly wisdom and correction if you're wrong and the pastor preaches something behind the pulpit that corrects you. That's the chastening of the Lord. Maybe I don't even know it, what's going on in your life. I've preached messages before and I know people got mad at me because I preached it and I thought, what did I do? I mean, when you're out there shaking hands with people and they go like this against the wall and turn their back to you and then run out the door and you're sitting there going, what did I do? What did I do, Lord? You know what? That drives a a preacher, a pastor bonkers because the devil puts all different types of thoughts in your mind. What did I do? What did I say? Some things when you preach the word, the gospel of the Lord, you can see people get their minds together and they'll start. (laughs) And you know their thoughts. God has given me the thoughts of literal people that have talked. I know it. And I just relay what the Lord speaks to my heart and it hits them right between the eyes. Now that don't happen all the time. Somebody say, well, he's reading my thoughts. No. The Holy Spirit reads your mail. I said the Holy Spirit reads your mail. I don't know who God speaks to. Hear me, lest he would reveal it unto me. 
I can pretty well tell you who he speaks to at the end of the service when I'm shaking hands. But I've learned that over the years. Before, I couldn't understand it. But now I, I understand it thoroughly. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And brothers and sisters, listen to me. Hallelujah. What God is trying to do is cause unity and love and grace and mercy in the house of God to where we all get along together. Hear me. I preached this back in 1996. Somebody calculate that up. What is that, 14, 15, 16 years, something like that? 1996. Hear me. I believe it's time to kick the devil, listen, kick the devil out of our disagreements and disagree agreeably and still love one another. And somebody said, amen. Hallelujah. Smile at me. Now understand something. If you're biting, bickering, you're fornicating, you're committing adultery, look at me. You're going to get sharpened by this preacher. It's going to be preached about. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the petty differences that we have. Hear me. And some things that upset people. Well, the preacher didn't shake my hand. He's hanging with them people all the time, but he won't hang with me. He never invited me out to the out to the restaurant. You know what? That's the reason why the preacher is a lone ranger. I'm serious. I'm serious as a heart attack standing here right now. Hear me, child. I've got that's one of the reasons why I listen. I don't favor to uh, favorite people because I've seen it go on in my former church where the pastor had his own clique. And I mean it, it literally tore that church apart. And folk, understand me, hear me. I know that mouths will start speaking if you start hanging with people for quite some time. So please, please, please don't get mad at me. Hear me. If I'm not befriending people like some people have said I don't. There's a purpose behind it. Now, I would to God that everybody wasn't like that, but not everybody's like that. Amen. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. Amen. But not everybody's like that. I've got my immediate family. And can I tell you something? Some people even get mad at the preacher because he hangs with his own family. Well, they go on vacation all the time. <laughs> they're doing this and they're doing that and this, that. My God, it's my family. Amen. It's my family. Amen. Hear me. <laughs> Folk, understand something. Hallelujah. We're not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. God has given me a little bit of knowledge. He's given me a little bit of wisdom. And don't get me wrong. I go out to eat with, you know, with people, fellowship with them. If you want to invite me to your house for dinner, you know, hey. As <laughs> long as it's not on Sunday. Because I've got to have my nap on Sundays. Hear me. And if I'm not busy, bless the Lord. But you know, to constantly and continuously be in a clique with people. It can't happen. And look at me. It can't happen in the body of Christ as well. We're all brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And bless God, I hang with this party. I hang with this party. We hang with this party of people. Well, we hang with the Mobites. We hang with the Canaanites. We hang with the Hittites. And he bites. Well, I hang with the parasites. <laughs> You're divided against yourself. That's what fellowship in the house of God is all about. 
is that we get to know one another. You'll be surprised that some of the people are like-minded like you and have a good time with them as being brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. (laughs) Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord forevermore. But you see, God wants His church in agreement, especially in these last days. Amen? Hallelujah. As I said, it's time to kick the devil out of our disagreements and agree agreeably in the name of the Lord. God is building a church of power. Even as we stand here, hear me, God is building a church of power. Bless the Lord. Let me tell you, when people begin to get in arguments with each other, are, are in a, I'm sorry, when people get in agreement with each other, look at me, all heaven, listen, is disposed at that body of believers. Stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah. Do you have living proof of that, Pastor Martin? I've got living proof of it, and I've got biblical proof of it. In Acts 2.1. Acts 2.1. Listen to what it says here. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, let's read, they were all with one accord in one place. Can we read it one more time? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, They were all with one accord in one place. Everybody say all. All All of them was in like minded. Hear me, child of God. There's in one place with one accord. What was the result of being in one accord? The supernatural took place. I said the supernatural took place. The power of the Holy Ghost was sent from heaven. Stop and think of this. When they was in agreement, child of God, when a church or a family's in agreement, the supernatural begins to take place in that family, in that church, hear me, whatever it might be, when we become agreeable with each other. Great authority comes in the midst of a church that's in agreement with each other. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Matthew 18, 18, 18 and 19 It says this, Verily I say unto you, what? Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, what happens? There am I in the midst. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If Listen, if any two agree as touching. I've always emphasized when you have people praying for you, make sure they're praying in line with what you're believing. Come on. Right. Hallelujah. I'm believing for a Holy Ghost outpour of God's Holy Spirit in this house. Maybe the other person you're setting your agreement on is saying, if it be thy will, Lord. Well, I know it's God's will to pour his spirit out upon all flesh because it's prophesied in the book of Job. So therefore, I'm standing and believing. You want somebody that's going to believe in the very same lines that you're believing in. Amen. Hallelujah. If I'm believing God's going to heal me, I don't want somebody praying for me that said, God, Lord, this is his cross. Let him just t- take his cross and handle it himself. No, I want somebody that believes the report of the Lord. By his stripes, I am healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want somebody in agreement with me. And when you've got a church in agreement, look at me. The power of God is manifested. The power of the Lord manifests itself. Hallelujah. I believe Satan tried everything in his power. Listen, to keep these 120 that was in one accord in agreement out of this upper room. But you know what? They did what the Lord told them to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, uh, the, 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 he, he knew that out of these 120, the Lord himself knew that out of these 120 in agreement would come a great and mighty move of God's Holy Spirit. Look at me. You are here because these, these forerunners set themselves in agreement and the power of God hit that place and the gospel was spread throughout the world. So therefore, you're here today because of what they did back then. What this church today, listen, can affect 
the generations to come if the Lord should tarry. My God, hit the clap button, Thomas, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What you do today, I'm talking individually now, what you do today, the choice you make today, could affect your generational house, hear me, hallelujah, and your children and their children and their children if the Lord should tarry by the choice that you make today. Not tomorrow, but today. And I say, God, thank you for giving us the ingenuity, the know-how, hallelujah, to step into your perfect will that it affects the generations to come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord, let me shout. Let me shout and let me dance and let me spin in the house of God Almighty, hallelujah. That 120 went into that upper room and God filled them with the power of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you something? They didn't keep quiet about what God did for them. Hallelujah. A, listen, a backslidden Peter filled with the Holy Ghost went out and preached a fiery, fiery message under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and 3,000 souls was added to the church just by ministering and preaching the gospel. 120 escalated to 3,000 souls. It didn't stop there. Listen to me, child of God. 3,000 souls turned into 8,000 souls. Glory to God Almighty. When a church is in agreement with each other, look at the manifest, manifest power that God places in that body in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine as our families come in agreement. Now look at me. Churches are made up of families. As the family goes, so goes the church. Can I say that one more time? As the family goes, so goes the church. Churches are made up of families. If you've got disagreements in the families and can't agree in the families, look at me and you get several people in the church that are disagreeing with each other, families disagreeing with each other. Look at me. You've got that spirit floating through the church. Hear me. Brother and sister, listen to me. Satan would want nothing more to drive wedges in this church to stop this church and the advancement of this church. He's done it in the past. He'll try to do it in the future. But back in 1996, I warned the body of Christ that this would happen. I didn't even know what I was preaching about. Hear me. But I fully know what I'm preaching about today because I've seen it happen. And it wasn't because God didn't warn us, because the Lord did warn us. And the reason why is because people took it as my word and not God's word. Hear me. But understand something, folk. The Lord warns us ahead of time before the enemy even starts messing. He warns us, forewarns us ahead. Hallelujah. To prepare yourself and understand that we've got the power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Am I talking to anybody here this morning? I believe God's got some great and mighty things in store for this church because we've been under heavy bombardments and heavy attacks by the powers of hell. Many families have been under, listen, heavy attacks and bombardments by the powers and principalities of hell, and I'm not trying to put a feather in the devil's cap. Hear me. But I'm just speaking reality. Hallelujah. It's just not you, but it's many, many families that are under attack by the powers of hell. You know, sometimes people think, it's just me. No, it's not. It says, don't be, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you encounter as if it's only you that's gone through it. Your brothers and sisters are going through the very same thing. You know, the devil likes to gang up on God's people. Don't you think it's time for the people of God to gang up on the devil? Oh, my God, I spoke a good word. Hear me. Don't you think we come together in agreement with one another, bless the Lord, and bind the powers and fortresses of hell, and tread serpents and scorpions under our feet, nothing by any means shall harm or hurt us? 
hallelujah, to the Lamb of which say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and not doubt in our heart, but believe what those things that we say shall come to pass. We shall have whatsoever we saith. Don't we, don't, listen, don't you believe that when we come together, hallelujah, listen, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, listen, as we come by the blood and the authority of the name of Jesus, that devils have got to bow in Jesus' name. Sickness has got to bow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Disease has got to go. The demon possessed has got to be delivered in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, that's what God brought this church into existence for. That's why he placed it out in the middle of a 17-acre cornfield. Hallelujah, to be a hospital for the hurting and the dying and the wounded. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord. God's got some mighty things in store, I believe, for this church. Hallelujah. He's tried to drive wedges and disagreements to keep the body in chaos, keep our hearts and minds off our goal, and that's when in souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you can get your mind so cluttered up with trying to put this fire out, put that fire out, and this fire out, and forget the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And win souls. There's one message, folk, and that's to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear me. It's not Pastor Martin. Can you give me a lollipop today? And you give him a lollipop, and I say, well, I wanted cotton candy. I didn't want lollipop, and I didn't care about that color anyhow. Forget about that stuff. I'm not here to stir up emotions. Hear me, folk. I'm here to tell you what God wants to do to this church. Now, you either believe of me as a man's word, or you believe that I've heard from the Lord. And I believe that I'm hearing from the Lord. And if I'm not hearing from the Lord, why are we even coming to church? Hear me. Hallelujah. I believe God has called this church for this generation. Amen. And God wants to bring us up to a new level of walk and faith in Him. Amen. Hear me? That we've got to be in that unity. We've got to be in that, that love and, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to bring us up to a new level of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But understand something, folk. Hallelujah. If you're where you're at, listen, uh, uh, next year if the Lord should tarry, Something's wrong. We ought to be going up and climbing up and climbing up and climbing up in the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Growing in the Lord Jesus Christ. My little grandson, uh, Lane, I mean, when he was first born, he was nothing but a rack of bones. And, of course, you know, he didn't even think he was going to live. And, and uh, he was out to campground the other night, and I was looking at him, and I thought, man, oh, man, he looks like Grandpa. He's got a double chin, <laughs> big belly. Look at him. He's fat and flourishing. He caught up real quick. He caught up real quick. But you know what? If he had stayed in that same stage, something would have been wrong physically. But now we know there's nothing wrong physically because, man, he's healthy. He's growing. Look at the, look at the fat rolls on him. <laughs> Hear me, folk. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see... I believe God is saying to the church, I'll, show, I'll cause great and mighty things to come forth from thee. I'll cause thee to be a fortress for the diseased, afflicted, dying, and hurting. They shall find healing in Zion. There I will place my balm and my oil of joy and gladness. God will be in the midst of thee. That was spoken to me back in 1996. Hear me. The Apostle Paul wrote to Corinth in 1 Corinthians 1.10. Listen to what he said. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, now, and that there be no divisions among you. Now, he's not talking about being parrots. Are you hearing me? Just parroting one another. Listen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But in the essentials of the doctrines of Christ, we have got to be in agreement. Somebody say amen. amen. We've got to be in agreement. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. People that genuinely desire, look at me, they genuinely desire a, a move of God 
will flow in harmony with each other as the Lord gives them, listen, genuine love for one another. Genuine love. Everybody say genuine. Genuine means true. How many has come to a conclusion that not everybody loves you? Have you found that out since you've been saved? Not everybody that says, I love you, loves you. And you know what? I say, Lord, reward them accordingly. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Open up their blinded eyes that they might see. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. But you see, there's got to be an agreement in the house of God. Because if there's not agreement, look at me. If you've got one, peer, one family. Everybody say one. one. One family. Let me give you an example of, of, of a, a V8 motor. They don't make too many V8s anymore, only in, in trucks or what have you. You don't get too many of them in cars. But you get a, a, an example of V8 motor. You've got eight cylinders. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got a truck, and if one spark plug fouls on that, that V8, look at me, it runs, but it's... You might get by, but one, everybody say one. One plug effects, listen, effects the whole motor. Spiritually speaking, if we can see in the spirit, listen, if there's divisions in the families, if there's divisions in us, hear me, just one will, will, will affect the performance of the spirits moving in the house of God. Hello. Well, I ain't set none of this ministry. I'm going down to the Church of the Frozen Chosen. They're going to accept me the way I am. <laughs> Hear me? Well, I've always said this. That door swings both ways. I tie nobody to this house. They come and they go. They come and they go. I don't put curses on people. Some pastors do if you leave this church... You're cursed of God. No, I speak the blessing of the Lord on them. God bless them in the name of the Lord. Because it's evident that if they're not in agreement with you, they're in disagreement, so therefore they're leaving. And if they're in disagreement with me, hear me, what good's it going to do for them to come to church? Because all I'm going to do is upset them. And they're not going to get anything from me. Am I making any sense? Yes. Doctor, or Doctor, uh, what's his name? Uh, not Phil. Uh, Doctor Oz. Make sense? Does that make sense? It certainly does make sense. Hear me. If we could disagree agreeably, fine. But if you can't disagree agreeably, look at me. Listen, the best thing a person can do is step out of those doors. Because you're going to cause disagreement and division in the house of God. I'm speaking some wisdom here. As I said, I preached this message back in 1996. God spoke something in my heart in 2012 to last week concerning this very same message. And you know what? I preached this message and God was warning the body of Christ back in 1996 what the devil was going to do what he was going to do. You know what? God can warn us over and over and over again, but if we don't heed the warnings, the devil's going to get the advantage. Amen? He's going to get the advantage. But if we heed the warnings of God and we watch out for brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ and we operate in unity, faith, and love, hear me, bless the Lord, God will undergird us. God will strengthen us. God will encourage us. Hallelujah. God will advance us. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But anyhow, listen, on a V8 engine, if that, if you, if that plug starts fouling, you're gonna, the whole motor's going to flub up. And before long,
along, you know, it's going to affect the others and the others. And the next thing you know, look at me. You're not going to start. You're not going to run. You might exist, but you're not running. Can I say that again? You might exist, but you're not running. The power of the Holy Spirit's not there because something's wrong. Hear me. Remember when uh, what was it? Uh, Joshua took Jericho, and uh, the Lord told him not to t- not to take of the accursed thing. Any accursed thing? Well, you had one joker. Achan. He took a wedge of silver, some gold, uh, a wedge of silver and a gold, a, 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 a thing of gold and some raiment, I believe it was, and he hid it in his tent, his family's tent. And there was a little, I, I forget the name of the, the, the company that, that, you know, that they was going to go out to, to wipe out, Israel's going to go to wipe out, and uh, some of the men went to him, some of the officers in, in, in Joshua's army said, you know, you know, this is just a little city. Uh, they're a backwoods type thing. We only need about 300 soldiers to go out and take them off. And Joshua says, okay, boys, go get them. So he took them out there, and can I tell you something? Those 300 got their pants beat off. And they come running back to Joshua and said, Joshua, they whipped us. We just went through Jericho. But these that we thought was going to even harm us, they whipped us. So the Lord starts crying out to God, God, what in the world's going on? And you know what he told him? Shut up. There's sin in the camp. I'm not moving because you got sin in the camp. I wonder what the Lord would be saying in the churches, the corporate body of church today. And you know what? The Lord found that family out. You know the outcome of that family? They stoned him to death. That's what the Lord told him to do. Of course, he don't do that anymore in, under the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. But understand me, you die spiritually. Spiritually speaking, you die. Boy, I'm telling you, folk, this is a good word this morning. Was it's bringing us right up today of what the Lord's doing in this church. I don't, you know, other churches, I'm not responsible for them. But I'm responsible for this church. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. If the church is to be the militant church, hear me, child of God, God's intends her to be, she's got to run on all eight cylinders. I got any V8s in here today? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bless the Lord. Without unity, without love, hear me, child of God, the church cannot hold an effective witness in the community. Can I say that again? Without unity and love in the house of God, the church cannot, listen, produce an effective witness to the outside world. Hear me. On my business cards, I've got inscribed Harvest Field, Pentecostal Church of God, Scott, Ohio, an oasis of love in a troubled world. Folk, I want to tell you something. When visitors come into this church, they ought to be able to sense the love and the unity and the faith of God in this house. They ought to be able to sense it and feel it as soon as they come into the house. There's nothing worse than walking into a refrigerator. Where people, listen, they're not friendly. They don't say anything to a visitor. Hear me. I'm glad to see it. Look at me. I can't run back there and shake everybody's hand at one time. But you're part of the body of Christ. And we all work in unity and love and say, man, I'm glad to see you in service. Bless the Lord. Welcome back. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I don't know how many people I've, I've, I've spoke to and they said, man, when we walked, first walked into the church, we just sensed the love in this church. But in a lot of churches, that you know, you, don't, you sense nothing. There's nothing there. But understand something, folk. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you know what? Some people want it that way. They want a big church so that they can get lost in that big church so nobody knows their business. But you know what? We're a small church, and we know people's business. 
we know what's going on in the house of God. But when you're in a church of 1,000, 2,000, they don't even know you're missing. You can miss for three weeks and they don't know you're missing. And some people like that. But in a church of 150, 200 people, I know when you're missing. And sometimes they say, hey, I miss you, man. And people get mad when you even say stuff like that. Hello. I don't think that ought to be in the house of the Lord. It means that we're concerned. Amen. I said it means that we're concerned with one another. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, but people that have a guilty conscience, conscience, they think, uh oh, he's gonna he's gonna pop something on me. Or she's gonna pop something on me. You know what I say? If you got a guilty conscience, get it right before God. Hallelujah. Get it right before God. God, forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. You can't be an effective witness, folks. Listen, Satan's strategy is we, keep, we can keep the church divided. Listen, uh, and, and uh, in the midst of dissension, we've crippled her witness to outside world. You know why? Because you're not going to testify of the love and the glory and the presence of God because you don't have it in ourselves. If the church can't get along with each other, why would the outside world want to come to the church? <laughs> have you ever thought of that? Why, well, I've seen a lot of unity and love in JoJo's bar. You know, I was watching a program the other day, anybody ever see Gangland, Gangland or whatever they call it? It's on television. It's these gangs, motorcycle gangs that they have. And you know, I'm not for the easy, like the Hells Angels, the Mongols, or whatever they call them, what have you. But you know what? One person does something to one of the gang members, all the gang man- members are on that one person or that gang. One for all, all for one. I mean, they hang together. They experience love from the outside world. I can depend on my brother. If they shoot my brother, look out. Folk, I want to tell you something. Listen, sometimes there's more love displayed in the gangs than what there is in the house of God. And we're supposed to be endowed with the love of God through the power of God's Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm glad for all these amen corners right here. (laughs) But even if I didn't get an amen, I'm still going to preach it. Hear me. I'm still going to preach it because I know what I'm preaching is true. And you know what I'm preaching is true. Because you've experienced it probably in your own families. I've experienced it in my families. And we've experienced it in this church. Hear me. But God's in charge of all of it. As we focus our attention upon him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But the Lord forewarns his body of believers that Satan will try to drive his wedges in families, in businesses, and in churches. He forewarns us ahead of time. I trust that we're not ignorant of his devices and cast down that which is not of Christ. And somebody said, Amen. Amos 3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? It's impossible for two to walk together except they be agreed. Hear me. Let's take the word of God to heart in the name of the Lord. Now, this is what the Lord spoke to me, and it's getting late. In my office, as I went through this message in 1996, he asked the question, Has not this message come to pass? He asked that to me, the Spirit of the Lord. And I understand I wasn't looking at some book or what have you, but an inward witness in my my spirit 
the Lord speaking to my heart. He says, I asked the question, has not this come to pass? I like to write down what the Lord tells me because if I don't write it down, I'll forget it. I want to put it down just the way that he, he speaks it. You have seen the enemy drive wedges of division, which I warned the people ahead of, of its time. When I speak forth a word, surely it will come to pass. But no weapon that came against this church has prospered. For it was not man that has called this church to the forefront, but I am the one that has held her up with my righteous right hand. I have sustained the ones that have stuck with this church, and I will bring many more into this fold. They shall be strong in my might, for they will learn my ways. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb up the walls like men of war and they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Can I tell you something? When the Lord spoke that to me, listen to me, I become a holy roller. When God speaks something into this preacher's heart, I take it as for granted. Hear me, child of God. God is going to send people and a mighty army into this household. Whether they be a Lazarus generation that the grave clothes are taken off of, will proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for they have learnt the ways of the Lord God. God is about to move in this house in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They shall not break their ranks. Would you turn to somebody and say, man, he's talking about me. I put myself in there. He's talking about me. (laughs) Hallelujah. For a season, I have let you go through fire to prove this church. For a season, I have let you go through fire to prove this church. Can I tell you something? God will prove any church and test that church through fire and flames to see if it will stand the test. And if it don't stand the test, it's not built of God. I'm going to run. I'm going to shout. Look at me. Because I know what God's delivered into my heart. And I know what's in store for this church. Even though you might not see it with your eye. You will see it with your eyes soon and very soon in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. For the season I have let you go through fire to prove this church. For as I have said in my word, so speak I to this body, you will be brought to the wealthy place in me. Your season has changed. Now stand still and see the doors that will open before you. For I have ordained that this church would bring forth much fruit. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. The very work that I will establish in doing this will not come from man, but will come from me. I will receive all glory among my children. Those I love, I chasten. But in the end, it brings about the the fruit of righteousness. Despise not my chastenings, It shows I love you. To whom I love, I give of my name, my blood, and my power. Stand strong, my children. Fear nothing that will come against you, for I am your provision. Hallelujah. I believe that come directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. You take it for what you want. But I know what God has placed in this preacher's heart. And look at me. God didn't bring us this far to sink us, hallelujah, but to put us over in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We're on our way 
to a wealthy place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Nate. John, come on up. Bless the Lord. I want the church to get up here and pray with us, if you would, as you send us off to the mountains of Guatemala in the name of the Lord Jesus. Pray for our safety, security, hallelujah, and the blessings of the people that we come in contact with in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Get some oil on your hands, boys and girls, and, and pray in the name of the Lord. You know what? This is exactly what they did in the early church, Barnabas and Saul. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work of the ministry. They anointed them and sent them off. All you're doing is, listen, hallelujah, anointing us and sending us off in the name of the Lord. Be a part of Harvest Field in the mountains of Guatemala in Jesus' name. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and anoint us if you would. If, who's got the oil? Somebody got the oil? Mm-hmm. Still passing around. Still passing around? Yeah. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just get the corporate body. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Father, yes, we accept this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, that we do the work of the ministry in the name of Jesus. I say to you, be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. Let the anointing of your Holy Spirit flow from you. Yes, my God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. O shaturikiti shatarabatarakiti. Londo rasa taribo shutura kata rakata rakiata ra. Linde mo shutura siliti rishi to basoto rakati asota rabata raki. Londari kiti bishiri koto sabaraki. Yes, my Father, grant it, grant it, my God. Oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everything is smoothly and decently. Jesus, yes, my Father, in Jesus' name. Yes, Father. Thank you for it, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget tonight, my wife will be ministering. I guarantee you're going to be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just consider yourself dismissed. Bless God. Tell your brothers and sisters in the Lord you love them and praying for them and concern for them in the name of Jesus.